Hello. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it is our last episode for a bit. Uh, we're going to take a break and restructure. So we've got coffee in hand. <laughs> so we're kind of, kind of walk over here. Um, I've got to get a desk pad for underneath this chair because otherwise it's a major production number to move it. Let's see if I can move over a little bit. Eh, you're gonna have it, to put, you're put the fine. I you're gonna have to push. To I'm good. <laughs> okay. Push. Push what? The chair? Yeah. There. Okay. okay. There we go. That's a little better. <laughs> okay. Okay. But so we're gonna take a break from doing our coffee with panda and restructure good morning drac Her it's name. good to see you so we're gonna get a couple of but actually you got three books for there's today. four here technically this is two. Oh, okay but yes and then i've got one book and then we're gonna pull a card and so i'm gonna let you if you want to Go okay. ahead and go for I, it. Okay. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Okay. So it's for the first two, which are bound together, uh, is Latro and the Mist, which is a two-book series, The Soldier in the Mist, and um, the, I don't even remember the name of the second one in that series, um, Soldier of Arete. Um, yeah. It's a... If you can picture the movie Groundhog Day for a Roman soldier, carries he's he's forced to have to carry a journal around. He's injured. He's, he's head injured and can't, you know, has no short term memory. So he wakes up every morning and has to kind of refresh himself with the thoughts he wrote down the night before before he goes to sleep at night. That kind of thing. So. If he loses the journal, he's kind of so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you can imagine like Groundhog Day with Bill Murray and him get, but he's getting up every day as a new day, and he's having to like remember who he is and what he's capable of and that kind of thing. So he keeps a journal to remember those things. He said Bill Murray, and I got this and Bill Murray as a gladiator. In my ah, head, and I'm like, ah, no. I watched that. I have not had enough coffee <laughs> uh, for that. I would no, watch that. I know you would. I would watch that. Yeah, it's the artwork for it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And the author lives in Barrington, Illinois. Used to, or at least did. So, but Valen has very thick books, but that's two that's technically. Two books. So. Yes. That is two. That Ooh, is. I like a... the title of the next one. Uh, and actually, that one's the first one. Actually, technically, it's the, the third one. Yeah. Um, okay. So both of these next two are Peter F. Hamilton. This is the... How do I put this? I've reviewed the first and second book in this series. It's Pandora's Star and Judas Unchained. Those are the two first two books in the Commonwealth saga by Peter F. Hamilton. It's space opera. Uh, this book is the four, third book in this series, but this two books follows a separate trilogy called the Dreaming, uh, the the Void trilogy. Um, so there's the two first books of the Commonwealth. The next trilogy that's kind of separate and kind of a little bit different, and then these two books are the last two books so far in what is otherwise a seven book set. The other trilogy and being in the middle isn't really exactly part of the Commonwealth saga, but for chronology's sake, it falls in between the first two and these next two. Set in 3326. And this has got to be Hard a newer sci-fi. Got to be a newer one. I like the fact that they actually credit the cover illustrator on the back, but they have mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter and their website on here. Smart. Mm -hmm. Peter F. Hamilton's a pretty often. connected guy. Um, in fact, Moyd has interviewed Peter F. Hamilton. Mm -hmm. 
He actually went to his his flat in England and because they both live in England, apparently. Yeah. Um, and and I'll link to Moist Channel. Him. He interviewed Channel is really good. He interviewed him for a good hour into and a half. Sci-fi, into books in general. He he does a bunch of different things, but. Uh, and the second book in that set is. I like the name. Night without stars. <laughs> Cover art's good too. Oh yeah. That one's a library copy, apparently. Yes. Trust me, I, I, I get these. The only one you get. I get these really inexpensively for as like former library copies sometimes, and they, mm -hmm. if you don't mind like the stickering a little yeah. bit in certain places, they're fine. And a lot of the time, they're in really good condition. Yeah. I usually get those through eBay, um, World of Books USA, or uh, what was the other one? I usually go through. There's one other one that I go through from Illinois. The World of Books is actually out of Toledo, Ohio, um, but there's another one that uh, ships out of Illinois that's very good also um, that I wish I could remember right now, but those are the two I usually order through, and often if they say they're good or very good condition, it's a pretty accurate grading, and, they, and when they say, you know, X li library copy, usually, usually they're in even better condition than what a normal mm -hmm. book in that condition would be because they're taken care of by a library. So, yeah. and then canceled out. So, or bought at a library sale. This is like yeah, crazy it, heavy. There's some, there's the... some heft done to that yeah. paper a little bit. <laughs> um, I actually was not into sci-fi. I didn't read sci-fi. Um, I got a hold of Binti which I've reviewed before um, by mm -hmm. Nettie Okafor, Oko Okoafor, um, African-American author. And the first book is like a chapter book. I mean, it's tiny. I read it in a day. Second book was mm -hmm. a little bit thicker. Third one was barely doubles the size of the first one. And I was sucked in from moment mm -hmm. one. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still trying to get you to read it. I it's really good. I'm literally in the middle of like three other books right now. That yeah, but this one you could actually like know, finish in a week. I'm like most of the way through the second novel for, um, I don't know, I can't finish it in a week. <laughs> it finished, I finished it in a day. Okay. You could finish it in a week. I doubtful. It's, it's okay. very, very, very short. I'll get you to read you, read you, I'll get you to read the first one. Or maybe I'll read it to you. He and I used to read books to each other. He uh -huh. used to read them to me and Issa. Problem is, is his voice would, is sleep. soothing and it would put me to sleep. <laughs> so halfway through, I'd be like, <sighs> you know. He says, nope, don't mind when I collected comics. As long as the comic was in good condition, I would buy it. I was only interested in reading it more than the value of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I... And I so have I'm the opposite. CBC I graded. like when we go to say half price books and they've got their their comic book section mm. and they sticker the cover. They put the sticker not the on plastic the comic book. on the outside. That or drives they, me crazy. They don't half of them don't even have bag and board. Yeah. And the ones that don't, they put the sticker right on the comic. It's like we know it's a dollar. Quit doing it. <laughs> yeah drives me crazy especially if it's yeah. really nice condition because mm -hmm. i've seen some in there that they could be worth something with you know, 20 CGC or 30 years from now graded because yeah, they're CGC in graded. pristine condition mm -hmm. and then they have this dollar price tag on it yeah and just it's like no i will donate bag and board so you don't do that you know it just it drives me crazy yeah but yeah. <laughs> Heavy yeah. sigh moment. I mean, it's yeah. just like. <sighs> Not anymore. <laughs> okay. So the one, I don't think I've done this one before. Hopefully I haven't. I don't recognize the cover of but you for you doing it. How so. to be an explorer of the world is a portable art, well, life museum by Carrie Smith. Carrie Smith is the one that does the Rectus Journal journals oh, okay. and um I, I remember now uh -huh. says at any given moment no matter where you are there are hundreds of things around you that are interesting and worth documenting 
It says, warning to whoever has just picked up this book, if you find that you are unable to use your imagination, you should put this book back immediately. It is not for you. In this book, you will be repeatedly asked to suspend your disbelief, complete tasks that make you feel a bit strange, look at the world in the ways that think that make you think differently, conduct experiments on a regular basis, and see intimate objects as a inanimate objects as alive. So what this does is this is very very zine culture, very zine culture. So this is you know. The book looks like it was, you know, cut and pasted from, That's you know, from I'm a Xerox for. machine and yeah. it's got doodles and it's got, you know, all sorts of It looks like one of those things. It looks like one of those things that was pieced together. So yeah, see, there's even great graph paper yeah. in it. So uh, yeah, there's different activities and this is great if you have kids and you want to do this. Um, with them uh -huh. so this might be fun for you and your grandkids um especially if you live somewhere really you're cool making memories where there's a really large city where you can yeah. like travel around I mean, and even in your backyard draw I mean, really you can cool do stuff in this in the city like you know? a list of things to document and collect you know you know yeah, so. i mean if i was any kind of artist and you know my parents handed me a, no not like that no a lot like that i'm not um, and my parents handed me a book like this, and I lived in, I don't know, L.A. or New York or San Francisco. That would be amazing in one of the larger cities that has a lot of touristy yeah. things to see, you know, important museums, observatories, well, no. those kinds of things. This is about, you know. this is about found objects okay. and finding, like, when we were, we were coming back from mm -hmm. meeting up with Dan the other day. Yeah. And I was taking photos of the texture on the brick wall yes. Yes. because the whole wall was painted. It was brick wall. The whole wall was painted except for the parts that it some of the some of the red brick was exposed on the white mm -hmm. wall, and it just the textures and the composition of it was really cool. So I took a photo, mm -hmm. and um, so like you know, round things, textures, long skinny things, colors, plastic things, uh, junk mail, fabric, things on the sidewalk, really tiny things, sugar packages, stories, manhole covers. I mean, just, you know, um, random experience generation pills that you can cut out and put in a jar. Um, <laughs> One thing, choose an everyday object. This can be something you find on the street or something you have. Look at the top half of the object for 15 minutes. Record everything you see there in detail. Then to do the same thing for the bottom half. The longer you look, the more you will see. If something is boring after two minutes, try it for four. If still, still boring, then eight, then 16, then 32. Eventually one discovers that, that it is not boring at all. John Cage. And it says a whale found in the street covered in mud. <laughs> so basically it's just, it's, I picked this up back when, um, I want to say back when I first got into full sale because we had to do a derive and I was just talking about derives on stream, um, yesterday, but it's, mm -hmm. Like, this is how to make a storage pocket. And the storage pocket you're going to use to make zines. Um, you can do research notes, uh, experience documentation log, uh, object documentation log. And there's different things that you can fill out for field work. <laughs> but um, here's the secret explorer uniform, which is a denim jacket complete with hidden, hidden interior pockets for carrying finds. Actually, it's a sweater. It's a sweater. It's got, like a sweater vest almost. Yeah. yeah. And I like this quote. This is by Wallace Stevens. It says, I am what is around me. So it's got a magnifying glass. It's got a pocket for a leaf. It's got a notebook pocket. It's got various collected items. It's got... Which has multiple levels when you yeah. think about it. So, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. This is how to uncover a mystery. 
uh, your favorite street. Go to your favorite street. If you can't go there physically, then you can visit in visit it in your mind. Map it out on a piece of paper, then describe or otherwise document document everything in detail. Shops, houses, street signs, trees, etc. Found paint. While on your travels, come up with as many things as you can find to use as pigment, adding water if necessary. Mm -hmm. Some examples include crushed berries, mud, using different kinds of dirt, crushed leaves, spices, alternate, document, and experience using stains. So, I mean, there's different things you can do. Weird, you know, instant sculpture. Consider that everything around you is a source for sculpture. Try making quick pieces using you whatever you that. have around that in the around you in the moment. I remember you making that. Actually, it was toilet paper rolls. Was it? I and thought you made one I with clustered cups. them together Did like a hive out of cups? so that you could put it on the and put it back on it so you could put it on the wall and use it for I'm a pen to, holder. I'm trying to remember now. I've seen one <laughs> before I got my cup I've seen one would, made out of small yeah. solo drinking water cups. Yeah, wasn't me though. But it was like a big round ball. It looked like something that would be like a like a planetoid. Or you know <laughs> crazy pong game effects. Beer pong. <laughs> oh my goodness you could put points you could put points on the inside of the cups and wherever you get the ball is <laughs> how many points you get and if it rolls <laughs> then you don't get any points or you, yeah <laughs> we should not be unsupervised all i'm gonna say is we should not be unsupervised as much as possible anyway so <laughs> The empty nesters are getting weird. Anyway, um, so Carrie Smith, like I said, has done a lot of different things, including the Wander Society. Wander Society is amazing. Bear ping. <laughs> Panda bear ping. Bear ping. Mm. Bear pong. I don't know. <laughs> it's worth it for the look on his face. So <laughs> beer pong, yeah. So, um, Wander Society is amazing. Uh, there is a site. It's in hobo language. There are zines involved. It teaches you how to make a non-invasive holder and make the, like, the one page. This is my little Minecraft um one page zine that I made last night to get my coordinates. Um, so they have printable zines on the website that are Walt Whitman. And I love it. They're like mini little mini Walt Whitman books. So you print these out and you go out on a nature trail and you leave one of these non-invasive where it just, it's a piece of paper wraps around the tree, you tape, tape it to itself. So it's not, you know, doing anything. Um, you know, you laminate it if you want to. So it lasts and then you put the zines in there. So other people find them. Um, I did, there was a group that had started out that was based on the Wander Society. Um, and I had done some zines for them and they were little mini scavenger hunts. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that I've been wanting to do for Berea. And I just talked to the hotel manager for Boone Tavern the other day and he's excited about the idea. So, um, you know, it helps drive tourism uh, in the areas that aren't the Artisan Center because I love the Artisan Center. It's got a cafe, it's pretty good, but it's, People get off exit 77, go in the Artisan Center, and never see the rest of Berea. They get right back on the road. Unless they're wanting to stretch their legs, they don't come down to downtown where the college is, where all the little restaurants are, where Boone Tavern is, where the galleries are, you know, the Arts Council and Rebel Rebel and Native Bagel and Night Jar and all the really cool stuff that we have here, Noodle Nirvana and Happy Jacks and you know, the art gallery uh, that Isa works in. And um, so we want to try and pull people, you know, further into Berea, actually into Berea. Uh, the gaming store, you know, doesn't get the traffic from the interstate unless they know about the gaming store. So 
there's a lot of things that are downtown that I would love for people to go on a drive. Well, even on that, and go through and even find on, all even these. Even just places. on that main road that leads yeah. to the college. Yeah. Where, where where everybody's opened a, a you know a store Peddler or a Mall, restaurant you know Sun, all, Sunhouse Craft Cynthia's Broom s- Store is there because now that I think yeah. about it in the years we've lived here there's a lot of really good places to eat oh here <laughs> and they're all up and down this road on so, the way to the college so. Native Bagel <laughs> is like known all over the United States Native mm-hmm. Bagel mm-hmm. um shut my alarm off Native Bagel has been reviewed gotten award national awards awarded on yelp awarded i mean just and when we moved here it's owned by uh katie and michael startsman michael is an artist and he was the first person that i met on instagram first Mm -hmm. person that i connected with because he had that fox print remember and i bought it for isa the little fox print um so they used to set up at the farmer's market which we had farmer's market twice a year which we have at tuesdays right now too Mm -hmm. um and it was they they had just finished or were finishing the like truck the little cart they had a, a coffee cart um, and they would do bagels and coffee. So that was our morning rituals. Saturday morning, we'd go to the farmer's market because they had live music. They had mm-hmm. all the stuff from, you know, they had some crafting, but they had, it was all this awesome local food and local music. You could get coffee and a bagel, which was her, by her, all her food is amazing. Um, and now they have an evening um, in the same building they have in the morning till about one o'clock they have native bagel and then at night it's night jar and it actually has a bar and they do smash burgers and they're so good um Mm -hmm. but you know there's people that don't know about you know don't know about it and it's like it's a travesty that they don't know about it because if i you know i love cracker barrel i love their hash brown casserole but screw cracker barrel (laughs) get a native bagel native bagel would be awesome to stop in on a road trip and just load up with bagels and sandwiches and take home a bag of the dollar the day after day old bagels too and take them home for their their meat locally is so good um but we have the largest uh in the area but we have top 10 organic farm college farm in the u.s um, Bria College. And the cool thing is, as I just found out, the big um, high-tech mobile art uh, app harvest mm-hmm. place has a farm here in Berea. And what they do is they try to get, gather up local, you know, local foods, local sources, grow stuff and, you know, be able to supply the restaurants not just the little mom and pop places but actually like you know go into a cracker row and you're getting local produce yes. and local you know i mean just there's all sorts of stuff um going on in berea but there's so much here and so much fun stuff and noodle nirvana best coconut curry on the planet as far as i'm concerned may's mom's recipe mm-hmm. um and then she's also got happy jacks which is a sandwich shop and so just there's all these really good food places around here i could go on and on um and it's just people just drive by and they have no idea and i kind of like the idea of you know Berea being small and people not recognizing or no you know noticing it um because i saw what happened to um winter park florida where i grew up it's unrecognizable now all the little mom and pop shops are gone They've been replaced well, even by the part of northern really LA, cool stores, Even the part of but... Northern LA County that I grew up in was small enough to where you could run. Like I used to run cross country and our runs would take us out to areas where all that was out there was like an open field owned by like a family of farm, like a farming family. Mm-hmm. 
and now all of those areas have been sold off to developers and all those things are developed into you know commercial district areas yeah. and things like that you drive through there and it's like you're in some part of like i don't know um i don't know silmar or north hollywood or someplace like that where everything is built up yeah there's re residential like places Orlando. and then there's commercial places and stuff like that all over the place and it's just you know it doesn't feel like where i grew up yeah you know so yeah winter park i don't in I don't 20 plus it. years it's been developed into another part of la yeah. so. we have the morse museum <laughs> morse museum of art which has the largest collection of tiffany glass in the world that's the only place i think we had that's real... still there there might be one gallery but it was all little like there was and they had these little nooks right off park avenue had these little nooks that you walk in and there's this little tiny you know there's trees kind of overgrowing it so it's somewhat sheltered and there was like Pooh's corner it was a, a children's bookstore that was you know, run by this one lady that was family owned and it was, you know, so all the shops were all indie. They were all indie. They did get a couple of places in there that everybody loved, like Banana Republic back when it was these really cool catalogs of like safari clothes when they first started or when they first, you know, started opening storefronts we had a banana republic that was super cool i was obsessed with their i've clothing. been to one of the first ones um, in palm springs yeah so we have one of those but we had it was back in like 1985 yeah. or something 1980 i, I mean i like, used to go I, busking I to like in the eight, park eight or nine years old i used to go busking in the park with the guy ron mm -hmm. that i was dating and we went out there a couple of times where you know he played guitar and mm -hmm. go out and sing you know, um, the, and the TGI Fridays I worked at in Arizona had all real Tiffany light fixtures over mm -hmm. the tables. They had the like dragonfly they were, ones. They were real glass yeah. Tiffany's. Yeah. yeah. Well, whether Tiffany style. No, these were, I was told they were real ones. Oh. There were about 11, there were about 10 or 12 in the entire restaurant. The dragonfly ones? Because I remember seeing dragonfly knockoffs. Over, I mean, I, over it's there. been too long for me to remember. Yeah. But I also know we had like the own one of the only triple decker um, phone booths. Yeah. That had like the wooden platform on two other areas other than the main floor, yeah. where people could like stand there and be on the phone. And there's another person up here and another person up here on the third yeah. on the third deck. Or everybody who could be on the payphone at the same time. Yeah. But you know what it's for? It's one of those things to look up people's skirt is what it really is <laughs> yeah let's be real that's that's yeah. what it is but anyway yep we have several <laughs> farmers markets up here our state has farmers farmers and farms connecticut is known for it land is forever destroyed yeah it's mm -hmm. well there was this big huge open field in front of rollins college rollins college was at the end of park avenue on yeah. one end and so you've got this old you know ivy brick you know brick building school it's gorgeous mm -hmm. and um art school very artsy fart and i used to take summer camps over there i had done you know started doing theater makeup and stuff over there um and there was this big open field between the college the street where the college was and up towards where the shop started and I remember students pulling blankets out and you'd see people out there studying on blankets, you know, with the headsets, you know, the Walkman with the headsets, you know, kind of thing. Um, I have a poster. I have to find it because I want to frame it. I have a poster. There was East India Ice Cream Company and they had an actual, their menu was a poster. It was a big, huge poster. Um, and it was set in an alcove to where the front part of before you even got to the front door of the store it was all plants and you know it's mm -hmm. like you walked into this jungle because they had literally had plants like you know it was two stories inside and the the two stories were open in the front and it was all chairs and tables and just plants trees every, i mean just everywhere inside um you know park avenue was known for you know having all these wonderful trees my grandmother and i used to go over and watch the trains come through um 
And so I was addicted to trains. I still love trains. And there was one tree that had a branch that was low enough that I used to sit on all the time. I got a couple of photos somewhere. I got to find them. And uh, mm -hmm. just, you know, so we go sit over there and watch the trains and Winter Park Sidewalk Art Festival, which is still going. Um, in fact, they are, let me take a look. They're getting like really, really old. They've been doing it for a long time. S yeah, 64th Winter Park Sidewalk Art Festival. Wow. So um, this is the show that I cut my teeth on. I used to go there religiously. And y'all have heard me talk about, you know, picking artist brains and learning technique and back when people had no issue talking to you. In fact, I had people hand me pieces of paper and pens to take notes. You know, they would, they would, you know, be so encouraging, you know, about how they did things and they get excited because they could talk about it and, and everything. And, you know, somebody was actually interested in how they did it and the technique and, and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That mentality is not around anymore. Me, I'm usually like that, but because in truth, a lot of people won't take the time to do what it takes to create it. So I'm not really, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not really worried about the competition. And if they do more power to them, their stuff still isn't going to be the same as mine. I mean, they can replicate it all they want, but, um, you know, it's just, there's room at the table for everybody. And that's the, the mentality they grew up with. So that's, you know, kind of how I, I like to be, but I'm also very, I think because of all the different conversations that I had over the years is why I teach the way I do. I'm very big on teaching technique and I'll tell them at the beginning of class, um, especially like the map illustration class. I'm going to teach you technique. I'm going to teach you how to do everything. And then I'm going to tell you to break all the rules and make it your own. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I didn't put Issa in art school is we learn technique and then I let her run with it and make it her own. And she's keeps me in awe on a constant basis. Um, mm -hmm. Sadly, she's been working so much that she hasn't one had my, time to be one creative. One of my nephews but... is an artist, and when he was a teenager and in junior high and had a bunch of friends who would come Aww. over and everything. You still can. They liked graffiti art. Oh, yeah. So what my step-parent, my step-mom and my parent, my dad did in the backyard is they put up a big piece, big sheet of plywood against the one big long wall back there. And they let the boys go back there and use it as a canvas. Go back and tag it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's awesome. That way they could like photo their artwork and, you know, maybe try and make some money off of it or whatever, you know. And uh, and then when they were done, they could just wipe the board out, make something new. Or if they needed it as an original, they would just pull the sheet of plywood down and sell it off and then put a new one up there. Really but cool. it was really encouraging to see that for kids that age, you know, being able to like express themselves that way in a, in a legal and, you know, I'd so authorized manner. And then being able to like turn around and, you know, sell their artwork or display it somewhere, yeah. you know, as what they've created, you know, and, yeah, and kids are so, never too young. Yeah. Kids, you know, I don't care how old somebody is. I've mm -hmm. seen kids nine years old write a book, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, just I've, I've had kids in my class who were like the one little, the one little girl that I was tutoring, who's absolutely adorable. Um, she was 10 and she nailed book binding first try. She was a writer. She took my sticker class. We did map illustration. Every single class I taught, mm -hmm. she took. And then yeah. her dad put her in tutoring with me for probably a good oh, a seven or eight months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. almost a year. Um, and I've had other students that I've I've had too, but 
Drysley, the two of you are great teachers. Wish I could have taken some of your classes. It's still art no matter where it is, just not gang tags. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. You can still, ta I'll teach you anything I teach the kids. If you want to take a class with me, you tell me which one. If you want to take a class with Val, I'm sure Val would have no problem doing doing a class. So that's actually something that I want to do in particular is offer my classes as adult versions, adult classes, because most of them are st it's stuff that I would teach workshops and stuff at conventions or like the big writers conference that's coming up in a couple of weeks. I would teach there. I teach there. So um, in fact, I'm teaching this year too. But um, yeah, it's just make some time for us. Any anytime you want to do anything, seriously. Um, but uh, um, in fact, I'm going to sit down with uh, Gabby and her boyfriend and his son, their mm -hmm. son. Um, coming up here soon too to do sticker class so yeah but we are going to pull a card this is the roots and wings oracle deck uh, by Catherine riles so i love this deck this is one of the ones that i got off of kickstarter i think yeah. um kickstarter or just etsy one of the two and so this one's going to be our, and this deck likes throwing things uh, at me big time. So we'll see. So I'm thinking, thinking of something here. I should really shuffle it. Okay, yeah, sure. You need to get your grandkids in the classes. Get your grandkids to take classes. Now watch, it'll make a liar and we won't throw me anything. Oop. Threw me two, threw me three. So humility. <laughs> Dreamer, and Abundance. So I was thinking about what we're going to do next, since this is our last one. So that fits. So to where did I put the book? There it is. <laughs> okay, so Humility. Except that you don't know everything. There is room to learn, room to grow, room to let others bring their strengths into your life. Fits. I have some ideas for for the next series that we do. Dreamer. Let's be careful that you don't lose your balance. Time will come to sit down and paddle in the direction of your dreams. Also fits. So that's Dreamer and abundance. Fullness, bountiful supply, and overflowing of goodness can be material, relationship, or just a feeling. So these are, this is the Roots and Wings Oracle deck. It's a beautiful deck. The artwork is really amazing. Um, I'm just saying that's the bag it came with. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, and it actually came so with. So you get the bag too with yeah, the you design. Yeah, you get the bag. I have a little mini version that comes in a 10. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Back here it is right here. So this is the mini version that's in a 10. But this one came with um, a little mini card it was strength their business card hmm. really cool sticker 
that I am going to comment on here in a second. And their instruction, or not instruction book, but their interpretation booklet is literally just a half sheet, a half of a one page zine, basically. And then there's, you know, garden spread yeah. and some different ways to read and that kind of thing. So the sticker is a crow <laughs> carrying a light. <laughs> and I haven't looked at this sticker since I got it <laughs> with a moon over it. Okay. Need I remind you? That one thing I kept, despite the fact that I was worried it was going to look like a night market, was that Isa and I are starting Two Crows Market September 3rd. The moon's above the crow. <laughs> it's the little things. Uh, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> And that is a crow, not a raven. <laughs> so it's the little things. Sometimes an orange is just an orange, but that's a little too coincidental to, you know, and I don't believe in coincidences um, or coinkydink is who is it? Somebody we know calls it that. Mm -hmm. But I love that, oddly enough, it's this card. <laughs> There's a little teeny tiny little version of it. And it says, I am so glad these cards have reached your hands. Cat. She actually signed the, wrote it as a little card. And I absolutely love that she does these little tiny ones. So um, that's actually something I'm, I've seen other people, other people do it, but not as well. Mm -hmm. And so I actually want to do something like that too. Um, but so, yeah. Yeah. Um, the deck strikes again and again Indeed. for the little one is you have that in the tin and this actually came with and I will link to this came with a little piece of fabric that is used for um, like a little reading sleeve like a drop or cloth a drop cloth type kind of thing. It's got little white stars all over it. It's really cute. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, it just helps keep your cards clean rather than putting it on a table that you aren't sure. Yeah. Well, a lot of them. Maybe they're on the table or if the table happens to have something sticky yeah. on it or crumbs yeah. or something. Well, it's also an altar cloth mm -hmm. kind of thing. And a lot mm -hmm. of people will use them. Um, I've seen some designed where they actually have the layout of the three cards with past, present, future, or, you know, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, on, uh, on there so that, you know, how to lay the cards out, that kind of thing. Um, gotcha. but so we get another one of those little cards there. It's awesome. Just for you. <laughs> it was fate. Yep. So good things coming. Answered, answered, definitely answered some, echoed some, some questions and um, perfect fit. So, and I'm very much the, if you're looking for a sign, this is it. <laughs> Just start. So, um, looking forward to doing the market. Gotten really, really good response from everybody. Uh, we got our coffee food truck. I am so excited. The rooster's whistle uh, is going to join us. And um, the Boy Scouts are going to be doing our uh, breakdown, our setup and breakdown. So we're going to have help uh, there all day because they have asked if they can open a funnel cake booth. <laughs> really? No, you can't. Okay. <laughs> Twist, Twist my, my arm. arm. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Honestly, I can't remember. I haven't I, had funnel cake in years. Last time I, it was at an know, indigenous gathering the last time. I don't know that I ever have. Because uh, one of the mamas. Maybe one time. Maybe. It's been, if, if I have, I it's been. I her name. If, if I have, it's been so long, I don't remember. So. Because I've been to like fairs and things like that, but usually. They used to set their RV up and do the you know, funnel cake. My, my parents really weren't. Yeah. ones to buy that kind of stuff i mean sometimes oh buy roadside me, fairs have some of the best food sometimes they buy me like popcorn or whatever but yeah. i don't ever remember having do you remember cake. well the last time that me you logan and Issa went to that one yeah roadside fair and they had the sausage and pepper hoagies yeah. that were just so good um i don't, don't remember it. <laughs> that was the one that was the one where Issa got on that the one ride where it, it goes around and then each arm does this. Oh. And so she got that off. One? I have a picture of her. She got off the ride oh. and her hair is all that over the I do place. Remember. And she's like walking sideways. She... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't I don't do the teacup ride. I, I can't even thinking about it makes me nauseous. I used to be but able this to do one, it, but... the scrambler. Scrambler. Mm -hmm. And it goes around. So there's it's like a big octopus mm -hmm. that swings in place, but then the arms swing out and do this. So you're not in a perfect circle. You're being flung out. <laughs> it's doing this while the arms are doing this. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So the, so Iso is just kind of like she got, she's literally like leaning sideways and her hair is everywhere. I have to find <laughs> that photo now. But Wonderful. Sounds like your convention's coming along very well. I so want to, I wish you could be, um, the, um, like I said, it's September 3rd. So, I mean, if you want to do the train in November, or if you want to come a little early and do September, um, that's going to be kind of really busy. So we could pick you up for, um, G force on the teacup will put me unconscious. Yeah, no. Um, the oh. um I can't even do the little round merry-go-round things in the playground. I I just no I can't. The ones with and the I metal bar. Love, and I used to this. love those. Yeah. And I used to love those. And yeah. I just no. My I've I've ridden on like the teacups and things like teacups, but I remember being at Disneyland and we were at like Fantasyland or someplace like that. And my stepsister and one of her friends and myself were going around to the different rides and things. And we, we went on the teacups. And they tried and to go as fast her, as they could. Her and her friend turned that little wheel uh, as much as they could to just try and get me sick. It was just yeah. like, oh. That's no fun. And I, I got on with two girls that as soon as I as soon as it started, they're like, let's see how fast we can go. And I'm like, oh, that was pretty much no. my And I didn't have a problem with it, with it until then. You know, because mom and I get in there and we wouldn't necessarily turn. We turn it a little bit, but not much. And we just kind of like ride around and it was fine. Yeah. Those two got on there. And ever since then, I just, I could not. The one, the one I, I like is, deal with. <laughs> is the tumbler. It's just a, a big cylinder. Oh, the one and with centrifugal it, force. It, it just kind of sticks you to the wall and people just kind of sit there and hang there and they kind of try and kick their yeah, legs. Yeah, because it drops the it. bottom. Yeah, yeah it drops, it drops the, bottom the bottom out from under it. From yeah. under you, uh -huh. yeah. That one's, that one's the one I like. Yeah. <laughs> I've never gotten on that one. Just the idea of the bottom dropping out. And it's like, yeah, I can see it now. The thing breaks down and everybody falls off. <laughs> no. They had, <laughs> that would happen, wouldn't they it? They <laughs> had a video of, you know, the swing ship. Yeah, it goes back and forth mm -hmm. and goes all the way we, around. We eventually, had, we had one like that at uh, they, Six Flags. They had a video where mm -hmm. the crowd had to come over and hold the front down because it started tilting back. Wow! When it went up, you could see the whole thing leaning back. So the entire crowd came. They shut the ride down, and the whole crowd came in and and hung off the front railing on this thing to keep it from flipping um yeah wow. i'll show you the video it was terrifying <laughs> yeah, um no, i grew up with right. my grandfather working for the central florida fairgrounds mm -hmm. and i used to help the carnies set up occasionally they wouldn't let me play any of the games because i'd clean them out um they let me do it one time and never again that that was a mistake because it was really good at it um and I've talked about, you know, 
Hey, Zach. Doing good. This is our last Coffee with Panda podcast. We're going to restructure. Hey, Gio. About to head off to get the kids, but hi. <laughs> it's good to see you. We're actually running a little late, but we're doing it kind of on purpose. I'm running it until 10. So we got 10 more minutes um, since it's our last one, but we're going to, we're going to restructure and we're going to do something else or figure out something, maybe make it 10 o'clock instead of nine. Cause it seems like everybody's here at 10 here. Till. Yeah. Here later in the day. Um, but, uh, oh yes. Uh, I'll have to look when, but yes. Um, So let me know. Um, but yeah, just um, I don't know if we're going to do something different, if we're just going to structure it different or if it's going to be a different topic. I kind of like to do a, you know, a once a once a week thing with Isa on her day off on Thursdays, but she's not usually up this early on her day off. <laughs> So she's mm-hmm. probably still sleeping. Mm-hmm. Um, Plus her afternoon yeah. is D and D for like five or six hours. Yeah. So, so until like nine o'clock, nine thirty. Yeah. Or whatever. So like so five o'clock during the like her the whole afternoon. evening is shot usually. So on Thursday. So they do D and D. Um, and I think they're meeting in person now too. So. Are they? Yeah, yeah. So they're not. Yeah, because even... he's he's uh, been renting the yeah. room over at Bad Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. So, when is our next actual uh, game night? Not next Thursday. Uh-huh. Next Thursday is the next illustration club. And we got to figure out what we're going to do. If Emma's there, then we'll do um, Amagurumi. And we're doing the little pandas this time. Uh-huh. Um, if she's not there, then we'll do, um, we can either do a different style of book binding. We can do watercolor. We can do whatever anybody wants to do. And we'll kind of vote on it on Discord. Um and then the week after that mm-hmm. is board game night. It's the, it's always the second Thursday. Okay. So um, don't worry or don't forget Monday night. We're playing Canasta. <laughs> I've never played Canasta. I I, no we're going to learn Canasta. Canasta. We got wrangled into a Canasta game. <laughs> uh, gay couple that was at uh, the pride social event that bought four of my pieces from the gallery exhibit, which by the way, I'm going to list the other pieces on my site. Those are for sale. So if anybody would like one, um, it's a one inch by two inch uh, progressive pride flag. And I also have some other uh, framed, I've got nine other framed prints Mm -hmm. as well. Um, But the, uh, I think you think I play Go in with a garbage can lid and bang it. No. It came yesterday or this morning. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. Um, but um, yeah, Patreon people. I have Patreon that's going out. <laughs> it's been crazy. Um, and just I've been super scattered. And by the time I remember anything, the post office is closed. So. Um, I actually want to get to the point where I have like a mailing thing here and I get my postage and everything. All I have to do is drop it or they'll actually even pick it up if you schedule something once a week. Um, but I would rather go down there in person and hand it, you know, hand it off to them. Um, but I'd like to go ahead and get, you know, um, I'm horrible about figuring out how much stuff costs based on the dimensions because the site isn't very user friendly kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so, uh, they bought four pieces and I met up with one of them. The other one was home cooking or doing something. And we sat and talked to, we must've talked to Dan for like two hours, two hours at least. It was great. And then, uh, we had a blast. Um, yeah, and the we weather got, was we got gorgeous. there about five thirty. We didn't leave till seven yeah. or maybe 10 till. Yeah. Yeah. And the weather was gorgeous. It was breezy and just really nice. It not balmy. It was cooler than balmy, but 
Um, and it wasn't humid it's at like all. It's like in the 90s no, it all. It wasn't humid at all. all it was week. windy and nice and breezy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. We actually kind of just meandered, walked back to the car, and I was taking photos of flowers and stuff. Um, but we somehow we got on the topic of cards and he's he's like have you ever played canasta and i'm like no he's like i would love to start a start a once a week or once a month game i think it was once a week game where you just you know chill out have some wine have over to the house you know nosh on stuff play cards play canasta need a fourth person though because his partner doesn't play yeah so let, and let, so we're trying let, to find out let Bella know as soon as yeah you can because if, if she so. needs to come with she needs to know that that's coming up so. yeah well if she wants otherwise to, she she's gets... gonna spring it on her and she's gonna be well, like no. what no i'm staying home tonight well, no, or... no 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 she works till 7 <laughs> 15 so yeah that's not gonna work for her anyway because by on the Monday? time she gets home she's exhausted yeah um and she ended up she's okay but her knee is still causing her problems Mm -hmm. um she actually fell down the stairs yesterday um oh, great. partially she landed on her butt um but they've had her going up and down the stairs they had her on a ladder yeah no she, a few days ago and i'm that. like she's got a knee brace why are you putting her on a ladder you know kind of thing so well, she's not wearing it how you know no she's been taking it yeah she's but she's been is taking she wearing it and wearing it, it yeah but um yeah. yeah, I know, but it's just, it's, important. Um, <laughs> it's, it hadn't been bothering her. That was the first time it had bothered her. And I think honestly, it's because she's having to do stairs at home because her apartment's on the second floor and stairs at work. So I think mm -hmm. she's overworking her knee at this point. Um, I don't have mobility issues as far as the hypermobility, but, um, my right knee every once in a while will act like it's going to go backward, try and act like it's going to go backwards, which is hypermobility. Um, but it's usually if I'm super heavy or I've been ever doing it and my legs are weak kind of thing. So I, she may have, she may have my issue. Um, it might be, a milder version of hypermobility because we have a friend that has a hypermobility and Rin and she's got to she's got to wear braces. So yeah, your ankles. Ugh, I I could not function. I could not function if it was like full on. Like I said, it does it occasionally, but I know what's going to bring it on, and I kind of can feel when it's going to do it, and I have to just bend my knees a little bit when I walk and just be more careful. Um, but yeah, so, and that yeah. job ends August, <laughs> August 17th is her last day. So what I'm really wanting to do is year round. So it's going to be one big event, but we're going to be doing other events all year um workshops and different things um mentoring between the two of us we've got a lot of experience in different things uh we could teach art classes there's you know i have supplies now for book binding that i got enough for 10 students that kind of thing so i'd like to be able to you know do that at that moment my wrist keeps sub uh, semi dislocate no no Hobble to school? No. I'm sorry, Gio. Yeah, I just... I know how it is to get care for stuff like that. And just... I wouldn't wish it on anybody. So, my heart is with you. Mm. Especially being a mom, too, on top of it. And trying to wrangle little ones while that's going on is not good. So super mom, more power to you. But yeah, it's just um, got big plans for two crows. And eventually I really, really want two crows to be a storefront because it could be sustainable because Val, Isa, and I, and Logan know how to run stuff, you know, 
Val and I have enough bookstore experience. Um, Josh took culinary, well, Isa and Josh could, could run a cafe or run, I don't want to reinvent the wheel for anything local, you know, maybe a cookie calf, cookie and coffee or tea, or, you know, even just another tea house, because there's nobody around here that does that anymore. Urban, uh, Urban Willow had all these different kinds of teas, uh, loose teas and, um, you know, making it a tea cafe would be kind of cool. And she could do like scones and different things. Um, but doing a bookstore gift store kind of thing, um, you know, I think would just be really, really fun. And I know how to make it sustainable and have a workshop space, a gallery space, and just have, you know, that kind of thing. Sorry, in a doctor's appointment. <laughs> That's dedication. <laughs> but thank you all so much for being here. Um, this is episode 33. And like I said, this is our officially our last one for now. We will. Eh, what? We will. <laughs> no, <laughs> around. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. You're lifting my arm all over the place. <laughs> now I have to do it. I see your arm. I see your arm. <laughs> what do you want? I see your, let me see both your arms. What? Put them in the air. You know those little roadside. <laughs> <little> road <laughs> Oh, you have to get the pan ready because you haven't done that. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I told you I was going to make you do it at least once. Because we got to do the pan up. Move the chair back a little bit. Yeah, make sure you can I know where get I'm it. Going. <laughs> I know where I'm okay, going. it's official now. <laughs> so it's coffee with panda. <laughs> Best 25 bucks I ever spent on the panda head, not him. <laughs> it's the look. So, <laughs> um, so we're definitely going to, um, we're definitely going to restructure or figure out something else to do. Um, We've just started picking up viewers and chatting and everything. And I'm like, no, this is our last episode. Um, so we'll figure out, you know, what everybody's kind of looking for and, um, you know, what we want to talk about, what we want to do. Uh, like I said, I'd, I'd love to get Issa and I in here as two crows and do maybe an afternoon podcast kind of thing because her and I together are usually pretty funny but <laughs> there you go we should have done that we should have done the whole thing with like cosplay <laughs> but um <laughs> We appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for 33 episodes of hanging out. And uh, I will have everything as usual down in the, the links below when we're finished here. And uh, kind of bittersweet. It's been fun. But new things. Lots of things to think about with our cards here. Which were, again, humility, dreamer, and abundance. All good things. And all kind of aligned to what's going on. And maybe we'll do a, maybe we'll do a two crows. Maybe we'll do a two crows podcast and uh, figure it out from there. But love y'all. Take care. Uh, we're still around. I'm still on Twitch four times a week, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Tuesday nights is art. And mm -hmm. then writing is 10 a.m. Eastern Standard on Wednesday. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on uh, Wednesday night is family game night or family kill night, as Drac has nicknamed it. We've been doing Minecraft. Uh, I started a realm for my followers and I 
nothing nothing big server you know thing just a realm where we can hang out i had, had a few people on last night and um saturdays noon eastern standard is kind of making and art so bookbinding and more um you know production level kind of crafting um and for now no more thursdays so i will be in touch I'll have links to everything down below, Discord and everything else, um, if you want to join us. And onward to cool stuff and market stuff. I will put, if you're in Kentucky, I will put flyers there so you can download them. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a great rest of your week, a great weekend. Love y'all. And... Take care. We'll see you later. Bye.